Chico Mo. Guten Tag. Ein Minuten, bitte. Slurp. Mmm. Good. Hello, everyone. My name is an idiot. <laughs> My name is Link, the Trained Unprofessional, and welcome back to Kingsguard. I uh, got a surprising amount of enthusiasm uh, about the first episode of this. Uh, I, I, don't, I say surprising because, you know, in I've, I've had a lot of games requested to me over the years, and this was not heavily requested, but as soon as I did it, I had so many people being like, Oh! Fuck yeah! This game is the shit! And people who don't usually watch stuff are watching it and people like it and... Uh, whoa! Where was all this enthusiasm? I'd have no idea. But, uh, ours is not the reason why. Ours is to fucking wonder why the render seems to be fucking up again. Hold on. Why did it redo it? Why did it fucking reset? You fucking obnoxious ass. Why does it keep doing this? Ah! In the last episode, we left off starting our run. Uh, we're trying to evade uh, our person. I don't know. It's a brother, but we're not. Whatever the fuck. Let's get back into it. We're trying to escape through the very real-looking <laughs> halls of this place. Leaving the arena behind, you wandered the main streets of your city, Havina. Every road was amassed with people, carts, and animals all weaving around each other to make their way to their own set destination. This was the busiest district of the city as well as the most hectic time of day. Not even a mouse could weave themselves through this endlessly shifting maze without getting stepped on. You glanced behind your shoulder and, got, and caught sight of Leandros rushing out of the Colosseum, his entire body shifting around frantically. You ducked behind a cart and watched him from a distance. He shut his eyes as though in concentration and lifted his nose up. Ah, oh, he's gonna sniff you out. It's cheating. Despite the scents in the air being filled with the sweet foods, savory spices, pungent smoke and perfumes, and other not so pleasant scents, he still ro rotated like a compass until he was facing you and then opened his eyes. How does he always know where I am? Beastmen always had sensitive noses, but this was ridiculous. It was a cat, not a dog! Still, it would do him a little good if he couldn't actually catch you. Between the two of you was such a large crowd, and a man of his size and stature wearing that armor would have difficulty trying to push his way through. Harding, please, just wait! Leandros pushed his way forward, apologizing the entire way as he wiggled through the mass of people and scampered out of the way of horse-drawn carts. Some actually moved and gave him passage, but most stood their ground and sneered. You ducked low, hoping to lose sight of him, and waltzed through the crowd until you waltzed. Fucking do, 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 I'm getting away, do, 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 can't see me, bitch. Until you managed to squeeze your way out from the fucking mobbed streets into the deserted alleyways. This chair is not cooperative sometimes. Left, then right, then right once more. What is that, the political career of Joe Biden? <laughs> Ah, topical! Not funny, but topical. Without thought of direction or knowledge of location, you just kept moving. Winding through another maze, this time built of brick and mortar. Ooh, a creepy tunnel. The passageway echoed with your ragged breaths and the clack of your shoes almost as loudly as the pounding of your heart in your ears. Leandros' voice was but whispers now. But even with the distance that you gained, you knew it would do little to stop him. When it came to a game of cat and mouse, he could go on for days without breaking a sweat, while you would be panting on the floor completely tuckered out. That's the thing about the game of cat and mouse. The only way to win is to not be the mouse. Credit to the cat from Red Dwarf. A great show. You should watch it. It's on BritBox. With his, uh, would that be the most not subtle like sponsorship plug ever? <laughs> totally unrelated, out of nowhere. No. Now, I'm not sponsored by BritBox, for the record. Just saying it, if I would. <laughs> With as often as he chased you down, you should have gained more stamina, but even now, you were ready to take a breather. 
but you had to keep moving to keep pushing yourself pu keep pushing yourself until your feet were sore and shoes worn down <laughs> That's what I imagine he sounds like. But I'll think twice before dropping his guard again. Sp oh, head rush. Oh! Whoa! Shit! I wasn't even paying attention! Jesus! <laughs> that scared me! You... P motherfucker! <laughs> I'm having a head rush and you jump out at me? You fucking fat rat looking motherfucker! What was he trying to say? Suppose father would just have to go on with thou da oomph. How much you want to bet this guy is a bastard of some kind? He's got the cigar in his mouth and he's a rat. He smacked head first into the back of what appeared to be a large man. The soft surface gave way, sinking your face into it ever so slightly before you were slung backwards. Didn't hurt much, and your nose didn't appear to be broken, but your tongue was a bit swollen now from really biting it off from the sudden halt. The man you bumped into grumbled loudly, clearly not amused. Damn right, which one of you bozos thought it would be funny to whack me from behind? The heavy figure twisted around, nose twitching and dark beady eyes peering down at you menacingly! Huh? Seemed to be a mouse beastman, or maybe a rat? You didn't exactly know which when it came to differentiating beastmen of like of like species. But you knew exactly how dangerous it was to mistake them for another. <sighs> it was always in your best intentions to remain silent about such matters. Just like calling another a nasty name, it was the same here. Calling a beastman as the wrong species could easily lead to a life-threatening rumble with an enraged beastman. So used a little mousy who did this, huh? <laughs> mousy? His condescending tone as he called you a mouse made you believe that he might have been a rat after all. He leaned in to have a better look at you with his lips parted to a toothy smile. Something didn't sit right with you about that smile. He clearly wasn't someone you wanted to mess with. He towered above you, with broad shoulders and sizable arms, and a large gut that peeked out from under his clothes. He took a quick puff of his cigar in his hands and blew a small cloud of smoke through out through his teeth. I like the little smoke effect, that was cool. Well, looky what we have here, boys. Another little mousies come out to play. Oh fuck. Oh Jesus. Oh no. You got to play with the mouse today. Uh, you, you took a step back from the stout man as ominous chuckles bounced off the alley walls and heavy footfalls from all directions followed after. Now bet you wish you hadn't run away from the big buff lion, huh? From behind the rat, a pair of shadows strutted forth and out of the corner of your eye. You caught even more forms closing in from behind. In a matter of seconds, you were surrounded by a group of disheveled and roguish rat beastmen. You looked around for a way to escape, but all exits were sealed by the rats. Slumped near a wall was a man clearly passed out. He looked to be a noble, though the bruised face, ruffled hair, and dingy clothes said he might have been down on his luck. Possibly from a run-in with the very same gang you were now flanked by. You's lost, little mousy. Need help finding your way home. Your attention was pulled away from the man, to the, back to the cigar-smoking rat, whose smile only widened at your new discovery. He likely, he likely was the aggressor of this poor man, evident by the smudging of blood on his knuckles. And seeing how compliant the others were, giving him quite a berth of space, you figured he was the leader as well. It seemed as though you were in the wrong place at the wrong time, and now that you had discovered some kind of shakedown, it was unlikely they were going to let you pass by without some sort of trouble. You steeled yourself. Guys like these preyed upon the weak, and you weren't about to wind up like the man on the ground. No, quite fine. Just on a bit of a stroll, but now I'll take my leave. Oh shit. 
As you tried to take another step back, the rat nodded once and you heard the rats ma matched your step forward. You gritted your teeth and glared at the rat, whose wily smile told you there was no escape. You sure? You've got the look of someone who's maybe in a bit of a bind. But I'm a generous man. Like one of those uh, saints or a priest. I help those in need. Of course, even churches have their tithes. And my help don't come for free just the same. The way the others laughed in unison made you question if they were a pack of hyenas in disguise. <laughs> a laugh in unison is terrifying anyway, you just got... <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> uh, that's just terrifying. <laughs> Thank you for your offer, but really, I just need to make my way through here... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. A deep exhale of cigar smoke in the rat's mouth was all he needed to silence you. He simply smiled and watched as you coughed heavily, suffering as the smog invaded your lungs and stung your eyes. Now, now, no need to be a shy little mousy. We all need a little help now and again. And it just so happens to be you's lucky day that you's ran into me. Somehow you felt that his version of being lucky was different from yours as you glanced at the man again. Worried about him? Well, ain't that cute. You see, we just got finished cleaning up a bit of rabble in this city. This here was part of, this here part of the city is quite dangerous, especially for a little mousy. Why he was acting so high and mighty, saying all the wrong things. He even had the audacity to call us mice. Mice of all things! You really think someone like that should be roaming the streets? You see what you see, you see, do you, do you see, did you see? <laughs> you see what he did using the city of favor here. Of course, there's still plenty of monsters lurking around the shadows. It ain't safe for you to go alone. So I tell you what, for the low price of ten gold, I'll guide you out of here. And don't worry if you don't got it on your person at the moment. We take installments too, with interest, of course. Me and my boys will see you safe to the end of this here alley and right to the door of his comfortable, safe little home. Now, how's that sound? I really am good. Oh, fuck me. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. These guys are scaring me. The beastman took a step forward, his face turning back into a scowl as he bumped into you with his belly. You sure you just don't want to reconsider? <laughs> God. <laughs> While you could have easily paid this obvious shakedown with the coin in your purse, your real worry was actually taking it out. Money was no object to you, being the prince. Uh, you always went out into the streets leaded, loaded with coin, and the off chance you didn't have enough change on you. Father would never let you buy something yourself. No, that's the wrong buy. Okay. So you had to take it upon yourself to see what wondrous items the market and merchants had to offer. You shuddered to think of what these greedy thieves would do if they found out how much coin you were currently carrying. You cursed yourself for not betting all, uh, it all away on those fights earlier. So what's it gonna be? Little mousy. <laughs> do we pay him the money or reach for your weapon? Neither of these seem like a good choice. Well. Mm. If we reach for our weapon, we're outnumbered. To my knowledge, we only have like a knife. <laughs> I got a feeling that these people are a little more experienced with roughing people up than we are. So if we reach for our weapon and take it out, we're likely going to instigate an ass whooping, if not a fucking murder. So... I'm of the inclination to just pay him the fucking money, you know? Ah, Jesus Christ. All right, let's 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 see what happens. If I fuck it up, I'll go back anyway, so. 
Money was of no concern to you. If you gave him the coin, then maybe you could pass without any more difficulties. Maybe per pretend you're like, I don't, do I have enough? You know, that type of thing. All right, I'll pay. You've made the right choice there, little mousy. Wouldn't want anything bad to happen to you on the way home, now would we? You reach for the purse at your side and loosened it from your belt. It's hefty weight, a grim reminder to never carry this much coin again. Even before you'd opened the bag, you could see the beastman's face gleam with glee. His eyes went wide and mouth slack. With that kind of expression, this was likely more money than he'd ever seen in his life. Now where did a little mousy like you get so much money? Money! <laughs> the rat wiped at the corner of his mouth where a bit of you was slightly leaking out. It's a good thing he's came to us, cause it'd be a shame if something bad happened to all this coin. Now be a good little mousy and toss it here. Toss, you say? Oh, fuck me! Just as the rat's grubby hands were about to reach forth, you flung the bag high into the air. <laughs> Coins flew free from their claw, claw, clothed cage and pelted down out of the streets in a golden rainstorm of riches. The streets sparkled with like the sun, and all around you, the rat's ears twitched at the glorious sound, entirely entranced by the gold. You son of a! And then you fucking run, right? But the other rats distracted, you made your escape, dashing around the leader of this gang of crooks, and nearly avoided him as he swiped at you. You weren't certain if this path of uh, was the path of least resistance, but you didn't care. You only had seconds to take advantage of your distraction. Two rats blocked the path ahead of you, but you could tell that they were clearly eyeing the coin you had dropped and wondering whether to stop you or grab a handful of the, cold, the gold themselves. Forget the coin, you bozos! Don't let him get away! The boss's words were enough to snap the two out of their daze and their eyes locked onto you. But despite their ample warning, their pudgy bodies were slow and their arms short and stubby. You picked up speed and got down low, hoping to slide your way between the two of them. Oh shit, we fucked it up! Gah! Might have been idiots, but it seemed that with that luck was on their side. You thought that they would have swiped at you with their stumpy arms, you guessed wrong. One of the henchmen leapt forward, his belly shaking like jelly and mouth agape, and doubt his entire body slammed you into the cobblestones, trapping you under the weight of 200 pounds of flat, of fat muscle and fur. Boss, they get him! God, keep him here! Don't let him squirm out! He struggled under the rat, but it was clear that he was far too heavy for you to move. His partner quickly joined in, increasing the weight on your body and nearly knocking the wind out of you. That's it, boy! Show him what happens when you try to run from us! Several more rats joined in on your capture, holding your legs down and pressing you further into the cobblestone floor. You could barely breathe as you were pressed into the ground. Desperately, you tried to move, but the collective weight was too much. Get the ropes and tie him up! We got a lively little mousy here! You kicked with your legs, and I'm gonna fucking check to see if this happens with the other one too. I'm, 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 I'm curious. What the fuck happens? If there was ever a moment that you could put your training to use, this was the moment. When you took these guys down, you could prove to Leandros and your father that you were more than capable of taking care of yourself. Oh, this is not gonna go well. You cracked a sly smile as your hands instinctively went to your belt, hoping to reach for a sword. Taking down the guys surrounding you would be easy. They were quite lanky and could probably go down with a few jabs in the gut. Large man might take a few beatings only because he was so covered in fat gut and fat, but you could get through this. Your fingers dangled to your side, reaching for a handle, but you but all you gripped was the air. You slid further back, hoping your belt might have shifted a bit during your escape from the Colosseum. Then your eyes went wide in realization. Did the little mousy lose something? He leered back at the rat, thinking that he might have stolen it off of you. That wasn't the case at all. The only sword you ever held was a wooden one used for training. And that was back at the castle. Without, without even that, you were defenseless. 
One of the rat lackeys gripped down onto your shoulder and a ragged chuckle was whispered into your ear. Thinking about escaping, huh? Bad idea. Even after giving you my most generous offer. Keep him there. We're gonna have fun with this one. Okay, so yeah, clearly the distraction seems to be the better choice. Because I don't think having fun with this one is a good idea. Try to loosen uh, the hand, but the outlaw's claws came out and tried to dig in. It was the one time that you hoped Leandros would hurry up and find you, but that was wishful thinking. Thankfully, you prepared for situations like these. How do you prepare for this? Don't strain yourself. You will face those who are bigger and heavier than you. Might won't solve everything. Let their weight, size, and strength be their disadvantage. Use it against them. The lion's teachings rang through your skull as you brought your body low and wrapped your own arm around your captives. Uh? Before he had a chance to know what was happening, you pushed back into the bandit, lifting his feet off the floor and rolling him over your back. He was heavy, but it just meant that he would only hit the ground harder. Duh! <laughs> oh shit. Rat continued forward, his own size becoming his downfall as gravity flipped him over you and slammed him hard under the ground. A single breath escaped his mouth and he was out cold. You glanced up at the boss, stunned that you had knocked out one of his lackeys and took the chance to charge forward. What? You son of a... With the other rats distracted, you made your escape, dashing around the leader of the gang of crooks and narrowly avoiding him as he swiped at you. You weren't certain if this was the path of least resistance, but you didn't care. You only had seconds to... I've heard this before. Oh, the two rats blocked, but their eyes were on the fallen companion. Um, don't let him just stand there. Get him. Um, oh, damn. So we get caught either way? Oh. So we wind up in the same place either way. But the difference is that in one of the ways... We pissed them off worse. But we also try got like a pretty good might have might, I don't know if there's confidence points or whatever the fuck. I mean, the only person that would be impressed that we took them down would be us. But they would be pissed about it. So, let's just pay the fucking money. You kicked with your legs and help him. A dingy rag was plunged into your mouth and tied around your head, cutting off your cry for help. Despite the danger you were in, you were slight, still slightly concerned to where it had been and wished they had at least used a clean one. Now, now, no yelling, let's use our indoor voices. No need to shout when we're all we in here, shot. Well? What are you three still doing around, still doing standing, what the fuck? Well? What are you three still doing standing around for? Go keep watch! I don't want no sniffing around in here. No one's sniffing around. Yes, you are. You news. Pick up that gold he dropped. I don't want a single coin left behind. I wonder... What the fuck would that say if we had gone with the other one? But I don't fucking care at this point. Right, right, right away. Threats scurried around about to follow their leader's orders while you, while your pleas remained muffled by the gag. Oh, God. Should've just listened to us. Then we wouldn't be needing to give you the extra special treatment. I'm... I'm getting a bad vibe here, guys. You sit tight and it'll all be over. Who knows? I might just not just ruin that pretty face yours for that little stunt. Turned your head to meet the gaze of the boss and took another puff from his cigar and let the ashes fall down on your face. He seemed so pleased with his position. But you knew he would have you knew he would have it coming. What? Leandros would be here, would soon be here to beat the crap out of this damn rat, and then he'd be sent to the dungeon for the rest of his miserable life. If he even deserved that. You just wondered what was taking the cat so long. Well, you gave him the slip. You continued to squirm, hoping to wiggle your way out of your restraints. But you what the fuck? Oh, I fucking wonder. Hello? Hi, this is an exclusive announcement from Marriott Hotel. Yeah, it's an exclusive fuck my ass. Now, if Marriott doesn't want to fucking interrupt me again, 
You continued to squirm, hoping to wiggle your way out of your restraints, but all you gained were rope burns. The rope de was pulled taut one last time. You could feel your limbs beginning to grow cold and numb. Okay, boss, you ain't going in nowhere now. Good, now frisk him. I want to know what else he's hiding under that cloak. At the boss's request, the rat began their search, tearing off your cloak and kneading their hands into your body, hoping to find any other riches hidden on you. His dirty, sharp, cracked claws kneaded into, your e into you eagerly, causing you to wince in pain. You tried to kick with both your feet to get the bandit away, but you had to admit, they had you completely restrained. You know, it ain't good for yourself to keep struggling like that. Here, here it causes gray hairs. You turn up to face the rat once more and wished he was closer you could spit in his face. Just like me and my boys did a job, all right. No sense, no sense, no sense in trying to fight it, cause you ain't getting out of them ropes. Besides, with all that coin you scattered, I bet you've got gold coming out of your ears, don't you? Probably pretty heavy to be carrying all that. You be thanking us for lighting your load. Hey, boss, I think I might have found something. Yeah? Give it here. You only caught a glimpse, but you recognize the gold gleam insignia on the medallion that the lackey handed to this boss. It was an item of utmost importance, the insignia of the Yasin royal family. Only those born with royal blood could have ever have the honor of holding one. That an individual's hand, and that an individual's hand selected personally by the king as trustworthy allies were ever granted one. Oh fuck! Now they know. E. Other than Leandros, your personal tutor, Master Corello, and the king's council, and your father himself were uh, of the few people uh, were of the few people in the kingdom who carried one when presented to the right people a whole world of privileges opened before you but to any commoner it was viewed as another shiny object that could be pawned off for an exorbitant fee well now what have we here the rat's eyes went wide as he examined the gold singet in his hand and how did a little mousy like yourself get your hands on something like this? The large rat knelt down and gripped your chin, forcing you to look into his greedy eyes. So there's more than meets the eye with this little mousy, ain't there? What do you mean, boss? The rat let the pendant drop from his palm and dangle by its gold chain, reflecting your disheveled hair, dirt-smudged face, and livid expression off its glossy surface. Done quite a bit of shakedown, so he is, and only ever come across this once. Thought it was just some pretty pendant at first and pawned it off for some quick coin. Cause after I sold it, I found out just how rare it really was. You see, only eyeborns carry these around, and not just any nobles. We're talking royals, those with connections to the big house. Not just anyone is given one. So, uh, boss, then what's it worth? What's it worth? What's it worth? You can't put a price on something this valuable. But boss, I thought you said you sold it. Idiot! Were you even listening to what I said? I wouldn't have sold it off if I'd have known! So then why is it so important if it ain't worth anything? I swear it's like talking to a brick wall! Listen carefully. A little trinket like this might not be worth much to the common man. But to the right buyer... Let's just say we could live as noblemen for the rest of our days. Of course, it's not the sort of thing you can go flashing around. They'd never give one to a beastman, so we'd have to be careful about who we show it to. Wouldn't want anyone thinking we stole it, now would we? You tried to shake your head free of his grip, but, you ca but he kept you still. No need to get restless. It's a very nice present, so I'll take good care of it from now on, don't you worry. Cause now I'm curious how someone so young like you would even have this thing. 
Must be uh, quite the influential mousey to be carrying this around. And with that coronation or whatever coming up, I hear a lot of nobles have been coming in and out of the castle. Maybe use one of those. Cousin of the king, perhaps. Or maybe. B -b boss! Yeah, the hell do you want? Can't you see I'm busy here? This is sorry, but boss, but we got trouble. Oh, kill him, kill him, kill him, and kill him again. Kill him three times. The beastman dropped your head and stood straight up in shock. Without any support, your chin slammed into the ground. Ow. No words were exchanged as a thunderous roar echoed throughout the alleyway, a sound that you were all too familiar with. With the rats, while the rats seemed to quiver in panic, the howl from behind renewed your hope. You damn rats! Get out of the way! A pair of rats scurried forth from the ends of the hallway, a look of terror plastered on their faces as they pushed one another out of the way. Around the bend, a shrilling shriek followed after them, stirring the frightened beastmen onwards. Idiots, what you still doing here? You were supposed to keep watch! The rats ignored their boss, charging right past him as though their very lives were at stake while you huddle into a ball to protect yourself from the stampede. What did you do with him? A lone rat struggled forth, limping on one leg that was about to give way. <laughs> he reached forth with a weak arm, a cry for help, but no one stepped forth to assist. Ooh, fuck. The wounded beastman collapsed onto the ground just seconds before a foot stomped down on his unconscious body. As you turned your gaze upwards, your eyes met with an imposing figure heaving heavily. A smile crossed your face, knowing that you were saved, but quickly faded when you saw the fire in the man's eyes. Damn cat always showing up to screw up everything. He charged forward, teeth and claws bared. The rat who was pinning you down and frisking you scampered to his feet, a high shrilled shriek escaping his mouth. As he was about to escape, the larger boss grabbed hold of him by his shirt and pulled him back to the front. Where do you think he's going? He's clearly up now, but so take him down! I don't want to die! <laughs> Quit your whining and get your ass over there! With a kick, the subordinate tumbled forward when he stopped right in front of the lion. Please be merciful. Oh shit! The rat screamed in agony as he was made in a living, in a living punching bag for Leandros' th fury. I almost felt sorry for him as the beastmen were beaten to a pulp before you. A few times the rat tried to crawl away, but Leandros gave him no mercy, and in seconds, the rat was knocked out, not even once raising his fist to fight back. Damn! The lion huffed, using more energy than was even necessary for the ruffian. Kitty always showing up to ruin everything. Well, there they are. They don't even look like they were drawn by the same person. What the fuck? He looked up at the rat. All but one lackey remained, yet he... What? All but one lackey? remained uh I, I think I think you mean just one lackey <laughs> he's all but one remained one only one would have left a lot of others left he still had a smug look on his face as though he were in full control of the situation he dropped his cigar to the ground and stamped it out with his boot Roland you deceitful worm Roland huh you didn't even you didn't know how, but you see, but it seemed as though Leandros actually knew this rat. Despite the position he was in, though, the rat merely chuckled as though he found this all amusing. Already the name gone, I see, cat. To what displeasure do I owe you this time? Don't give me that crap! I know you rodents like I know whoa! I know rodents like you are always like that. Oh, species is damn it. Now tell me where he is! He? Don't play dumb! I can smell Harding! I know he's here! Harding? Don't ring a bell. If he's looking for someone, then why don't you try asking those masked weirdos you keep s that keep spying on me? Landris glanced downward and his eyes went wide when he finally noticed you pinned to the ground. Oh, is this the one you've been looking for? We were just, uh, working out a bit of a deal, you see. Offered him protection for some coin. Who knows how dangerous these streets can be. 
Of course, he was a bit too antsy, so we had to restrain him a bit. But don't you worry, we got this handled, so scurry along now. you more than wasted enough of my time. Forget about putting you in jail. I'm gonna wring your neck myself for this! Jeez, what you got so angry over? One think to use your fiancé or something. Oh, fuck. Suppose I must have struck a nerve. <laughs> I just always gotta be so tense. Well, looks like we gotta cut this short. I'm a very busy man, you see, and we don't have time to stick around and play. Why like hell you're getting away! Looks like you're up, Louise. What? <laughs> oh, motherfucker. Fucking Roland ran away. Just Leandros is about to charge forward. Roland pushed his last lackey, lackey into Leandros' way. Move, rat! Leandros cracked his knuckles as he stared down the trembling rat. Oh, hey, Leandros! Bam! Leandros gave the beastman no mercy as his punch sent the last minion flying backwards. Jesus, where he cratered into the wall. Roland chuckled from the end of the alley as though his operation wasn't foiled in the slightest. So long, furball! You think that fat motherfucker is gonna outrun Roland? I mean, Leandros? Get back here, you worm! <laughs> Leandros was just about to jump over you before he stopped to glance down at your miserable form. With the gag wrapped tightly around your mouth, you could only muddle incoherent sounds. <laughs> Until he wanted to charge forward to chase down the rat, but you he had made a disgruntled huff and moved down to free you. The cloth around your mouth was loosed and you spat it out in disgust while your ankles were finally freed. Before you could even lift yourself off the floor, a pair of arms wrapped around you and brought you to your feet. <laughs> that, damn it, Harding! What the hell's with you? Wrong with you! Leon, I can explain. Quiet, Harding! What were you thinking? Running off on your own like that? See what kind of mess you can get yourself in when you don't listen to me! But I- I don't want to hear it! You always do this! You never follow my orders and always get yourself into trouble! What do I have to do to keep you in line? Put a leash around your neck? You were damn near lucky I found you in time! Do you have any idea of the ramifications if they found out who you are? What they would do to you! The city is not your damn playground! You could have been seriously hurt! After 15 years, I thought that you would have at least realized that by now! You're a damn prince for God's sake! Start acting like one! You never got a chance to defend yourself as Leon just laid it all in on you. His harsh words pierced through like icicles. Yet they showed no sign of melting. He knew he was right. That you had that yet run headstrong into danger, even if it was an accident. You, you. Leon Joseph's breath was hot as steam. His eyes bloodshot, teeth bared, fists clenched, and face of an effigy of rage. I don't know if speaking our minds a good idea right now. I'm gonna save real quick. Just because I'm curious what happens if we say speak your mind, my inclination is to say close your eyes. Just fucking take it. You, you fucked up. Accept it. I'm curious what happens if you say speak your mind, though. It wasn't your fault that any of this happened. You just wanted to get away, not have to be bogged down every waking hour by your princely duties. You were tired of it all. Well, this wouldn't have happened if you just left me alone. What? Father always tells you to keep me in check to make sure I n never leave the castle to make sure I always finish all the food on my plate. I do that so that you don't get into trouble. I never asked you for your help. I'm sick of it, all right? You follow him like some puppet. Always treating me like I'm some child. Like I can't take care of myself. Like you've got no spine. Harding! And pushed him to the edge, and if he uh, and if he was a simmering pot, he would have boiled right now. You prepared yourself, flinching and closing your eyes as he rose a hand. It had been years since he hit you, and given his current demeanor, he wouldn't hold back. Hmm. Rather than in sharp pain, you felt a gentle warmth on your shoulder, a soft, caring touch. 
I'm this way because I never want to see you hurt again. You open your eyes slowly and the look of fury had vanished from his face. And his eyes were welling with tears. The look on his face was enough to make you regret your words. Like family, it was inevitable that you would argue with each other, but deep down inside, you still loved him like a brother. <sighs> it was one thing that no amount of frustration could ever erase. You lifted up your feet in a crushing bear hug, squeezing the air and life out of you. Leon, why can't you just listen to me? Why do you always run away? What do I have to do to get you to understand? I'm sorry, Leon, I just... Lion put a lone finger close up close to your lips. <sighs> I know what you're gonna say. You say it every year. It's your birthday. You should be allowed one day to do whatever you want. But that doesn't excuse you from your duties as prince. What would you have what would you have done if they found out about you? This goes beyond just your safety. If they happened to if they kidnapped you, then the entire nation would be in danger. But if I had my sword, I could have This isn't a what if scenario. You were in real danger there. Those rogues are some of the worst the city has. Even though we live in a time of peace, there are still those out there who will not think for a second to do you harm. There may come a time when I won't be there to protect you. I'm sorry. But you still came, though. Leon just grunted and stared at the mess he had made. And she had a real number on them, too. I don't think they'll be able to move for a few weeks. That was a mere warning. And they did anything more to you, you wouldn't even recognize them. Now that they're dealt with, I don't think you'll be getting away with this either. I've already thought of several punishments while looking for you. Uh... And I'm sure your father would like to hear them as well. But I'm the victim here! Maybe this will be the time you finally stop acting like a child then. Let's just get going. We've kept your guests at the castle waiting long enough. This is hardly the place to talk. I still have to go there? It is your party after all. It's more than just necessary. You mean my father's party? It's my it's just my birthday disguised as a celebration to his achievements. He doesn't care at all about me. You know that's not true. And just gripped your hand tightly and guided you out of the perilous alley. What about them? I'll get the guards to deal with them later. Damn, Roland never learns. Once I catch him, he'll be in the slammer for a few weeks for this. And I'll be sure to personally keep watch over him. So you knew who he was? Yes. He's a deceitful rat who skirts the law time and time again. Though now, with most of his lackeys soon to be behind bars, he'll think twice before skittering out into this into the daylight again. But he has the fucking... the medallion! I'm sure that isn't the, the best of things. Considering it was a fixed event, I imagine it's gonna play into something down the line. I'm gonna take a quick look at what happens if we just close our eyes. You prepared yourself, flinching and closing your eyes as you rose a hand. It had been years since the things I already said. Dots, rather than the sharp pain, you felt the touch. You're not hurt, are you? You opened your eyes slowly, and the look of fury had vanished from his face, and his eyes were welling up with tears. All at once you felt guilty for putting him through so much stress, distress. Leandros was your king's guard, after all. It was his duty to keep you safe. But it was more than just that. You two were family, as close as any brother related by blood could be. The last thing you ever wished was to see him get hurt, and you could sympathize that he felt the same way about you. Felt that way about you too. 
It was clear just how this incident shook him, and he couldn't find the right words to say. No, I'm just a little sore. You lifted up your feet, and a bear hug, and the squeezing, and the yeah. Okay, so the big difference is literally just do we regret saying the things, or do we regret just doing this all in general? I personally feel like the right choice is close your eyes, because, yeah, ha, ah, I don't even know if that's true. Because being honest about how you feel, communicating that, even if it's not the most pleasant thing to say, is important. I don't know. This is what I'm going to do. I saved the other one right there. I'll save the second one right there. This one right here is the one where we spoke our mind. This one right here is the one where we closed our eyes. I'm going to end the episode here because it's already been 50 minutes. And you let me know in the comments down below what you think I should do. Which one should I go with? Which one do you think was better? Which one will have the less shit outcome down the line? Um, will it be uh, closing our eyes or speaking our mind? You let me know what you think. I'll consider what y'all have to say. Let me know what you think and why. Give me some reasoning. I'll mull it all over and then we'll see how it all goes in the next episode. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, I have been the trained up professional and you are not. <laughs> Bye everyone.